in this breakdown we'll talk about logos thing. So basically we will cover compositing in Notch. By default Notch processes layers as separate effects, but you can always change that default and treat Notch as more a linear uh, layer based editing tool. Now let's talk about that. As mentioned, the default setting in Notch is to process every single layer as a separate effect. And this default is set for the benefit of media servers, because media server interprets every single Notch layer as its own design, as a unique setup. But you can change that by going to project, settings and unticking layers as separate effects. As soon as you do that, every single layer is rendered at once in a full timeline. So let's check the sequence. So here we have five different layers and they correspond with different tasks. The first layer is uh, controlling the audio. The second one is controlling the sound based animations and alpha fades. And then we have uh, graphic effects, titles and a video effect. Uh, video effects or VFX is just an adjustment layer and is applied on a very short sequence in the overall design. So before we get into any specifics of the layers or nodes, uh, let's talk a little bit about range. I'm going to disable audio for now. I have a separate layer specifically for that. And if I start playhead, you will see that there's a little marker here in the top, which is called range. So basically with the range enabled, I can define how much of a timeline do I actually want to work with. I'm going to set it to five seconds and I'm going to hit home and play again. As you see now, the animation is restarting exactly as it hits five second mark jumps back to the zero state. So this is a very, very handy tool if you need to refine specific animations in a specific span of time. Obviously, you can move this around to your liking. So with that said, I'm going to bring this back to its uh, default position. So zero to nine seconds. I'll leave it activated and let's talk about layers now. So the first layer here in the stack is designated for audio and there's not much more in it apart of the actual audio file being placed. I like to have audio file placed separately on its own layer if I'm working with the notch timeline as a compositing tool because from this panel right here I can uh, either activate or deactivate it as I please. So it's just easier for me to find this node in a timeline and I know exactly where it is instead of going to a specific layer and trying to find it amongst many other nodes. With that said, since this sequence is based on music, we can actually see the wireframe of the music. Uh, as you see, I have a couple of markers and you can actually set your own markers by pressing Ctrl M. And depending on which layer you had marked up while setting up the marker, you will be able to edit its uh, properties. So usually I would set all the markers and all the points that I need to pay attention to music wise. And I would just disable audio because it's a little bit uh, destructive to have audio playing at all times. So I'm going to unsolo the audio track and I will hide the waveform generator. Right, so let's move further to the sound ring alpha fade layer. Now uh, this layer right here refers to audio, so we will need to enable the audio back and I'm just going to unmark all of the rest of the layers. So let's see exactly how this layer looks and how does it react to audio. So it's fairly simple setup. There's one image 2D with the gradient and a gradient is set to a radial setting and there are several post effects applied on it. Notice that we have different blend modes in a root node. This is quite important if you're working with several layers stacked up. Very likely you would like to use something that actually contains alpha or additive setting so you actually could see through the stacked layers. In this case, this layer is set to blend with alpha channel. Okay, let's come back to the layer view and I'm going to enable the GFX layer. I'm going to disable the other two. So let's see how this layer looks. Right, so there's some post effects, there's a little bit of fields and the cloner system. So let's talk about different points in this setup. I think I'm going to start by disabling all the post effects and the field system. So the main graphical element here is a clone to image setting. So clone to image is actually using fractal noise as a driver. And that fractal noise is exactly what is driving the cloner setup with a with couple of cylinders and a sphere. There are a couple of effectors just to make things a little bit more dynamic. Uh, and there is a little lighting rig using voxel cone lighting. Uh, here in the top we have a 
small field system. And field system is uh, connected via render layer. Now the reason why it's connected via render layer is because I wanted to retain the post effects specifically attributed to fields. I didn't want the main post effects mixed with the field post effects. So basically I just split the rendering path. One thing to note about fields, in the primitive emitter it's set to emit once. I don't want the fields to emit all the time, I just want to do it once in the beginning and then they just fade. Great. Here a little bit lower we have several post effects. And uh, these post effects basically gives the dynamics to the whole scene. So if I was to mention one specific post effect that contributes most to this design, probably is frame difference. So basically it takes a, a existing frame and a previous frame and it just applies blending modes towards both of them. And it emits somewhat of a luminance effect. Right, then we have a camera that we're looking through and this camera is actually copied out to other layers here as well, for instance titles. Because this layer right here it contains all things related to text. Now the reason why I'm rendering those two layers separately is because I don't want any of these effects that are applied in the background for the graphics to be applied on the titles. I want titles to be quite clean and quite static. So let's talk about the nodes that are here in the titles layer. First of all we have couple of image planes here on the side and these are responsible for the social shouts. It's just a little unintrusive way of, uh, of perhaps showing your social media handles. Then here in the bottom we have a multiplex source based uh, image plane which generates these random pictures all around the, the, the center of the setup. So it's just a selection of alpha based PNG files. Let's talk about the center. Here in the center we have a couple of shape 3Ds and these shape 3Ds are little animations that gives a tiniest bit more dynamic to the placement of the logo. Then we have image plane that gives us the little black background for the text and we have two text inputs for the title and the logo. A little bit further down we have another shape 3D and it's actually working with the sound modifier. Now we won't going to be able to see it now because we're not playing back the sound. So I'm going to come back and enable the sound. You can actually see that it uh, emits a little line that goes from center outwards. Right and then in the very bottom of the setup we have logo wipes. So basically we have these two gradients just swooshing through and adding a little bit of dynamics uh, to the center of the composition. Right, so this layer 2 is set to blend with alpha channel as we want to have alpha progressively going from the very bottom to the very top of the stack. The last layer that we have here is a video effects. And it's applied specifically on one section of uh, this sequence. Now if I go into the layer you will see that there's not a great many things happening, it's just a couple of post effects which are applied directly on the rest of the stack. Think of this as an adjustment layer for uh, After Effects. And for that I'm using a Composition Blend Mode. So if you're coming from After Effects background, Composite Blend Mode, Composition is the same thing as Adjustment Layer in After Effects. So here we have a LUT a bump map warp and a transform image with a couple of matte modifiers. I think we can set up a little preview if we just enable an image TD. I'm going to grab a video reference so we can preview exactly what's going on in this layer. So there are a couple of displacements with the bump map warp and the image is jumping and rocking with a transform image by going to position X and position Y uh, randomly with a matte modifier set to a random noise. So I'm going to disable the image 2D. Right, and that's the basics of this setting. We have four layers set to blend with alpha channel. We have one layer set to composition, which is our adjustment layer for one specific sequence right here. And if we talk per layer, we have first one dedicated for the audio track, second one for the audio based effects third one for the graphical effects with the cloner and a little bit of a field and a little bit lower here we have titles so specific text that we want to showcase and as mentioned the very last one is just a specific effect to exaggerate the change in music so since we are talking about compositing before i let you go i want to showcase you one specific node that might come quite handy if you're working with the video edits i'm just going to open a new notch file for that so let's set up a very simple image processing here so I need the image 2D for output and usually I would drag in a video from the resources as a video loader and connect it to the 
first input video node. So if I start playhead now, uh, this node runs through available keyframes in the video. And once it's out of the keyframes, it will just start looping it again and again and again. When you're editing video, there might be instances where this is just not desired, where you perhaps you just want to see the clip playing back and then stopping. So for that, there's another node and, and that node is called video clip. So I'm going to connect it to the first input and I'm going to choose the video from the drop down. So let's see what happens now when this clip runs out of the keyframes. That should happen somewhere around 30 second mark. It stops on the last available keyframe. So when does this become handy? Well, basically, if I want to start my video from, let's say, 10 second mark, I can just trim this with the bracket key bring it to the start of the composition. And now this 10 second marker is actually my starting keyframe. Great. What if I want to further edit this clip? I can actually add some time segments and make trims and cut out undesired segments, right? So I'm going to set my timeline somewhere to the two second marker and I will split the time segment here. Now I can actually control these two clips separately. For instance, perhaps I want to trim it a little bit over here. So these two sequences are playing one after the other. There we go. Obviously I can even set a gap between them if that is what I desire. Right, I can even add another video to the segment. So I'm gonna split the segment, mark up the new segment. And here I can choose another video from available ones in the resources. So this is a very handy and practical node if you want to make some edits in your footage. So again, you can trim the starting point, you can trim inside of the clip, and you can actually replace a segment with another clip entirely. I hope this comes handy. So I think this concludes this little breakdown. I hope you found it handy. See you in the next one.